She's so cold, Elphino. The child is alert, and I see no wounds, and yet... <sighs> she grows weaker. My spells can do no more. What she needs is a change of clothes and a warm bed. We must hurry back. Not now! Matsya, take the child! It appears we've made enough noise to be heard for miles around. More will be upon us ere long. We make our stand here. Matya, can you take her back to the village? But... the child? All... all by myself? You can't be serious! The beasts will follow you home unless we stop them here. And so we shall. Be strong, Matsya. Her life is in your hands. Right. I... I can do it. I know you can. We'll keep them busy, Matsya. Go! Quickly! Steady. You know the way. No. No. Not you too. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. To live is to suffer. To drink of calamity. It is a perilous path. Death lurks in the dark. No! I'm not afraid! I'm not afraid! Do not avert your eyes. See! See your life for what it is! See how the hardships make you strong, every doubt reforged. Every agony. <sighs> Divinity? Nay, but one who would deliver thee just the same. Please, you must save the child. She is all that remains of Mevan and Grasef. Please! Well, well. Seems the babe's taken a liking to you. Despite our friends as we flew in, they appeared to be holding their own against the Horde.
Right. That's the last of them. We should hurry and find Matsya. Really? How can you be so sure? A fine battle it must have been. Shame I missed it. Estinian, it was you who came to Matya's aid. I was only along for the ride. Vritra was the one who saw the boy was in need. The two are headed back to the village. Where the worm will honor Ahiwan's wishes and finally reveal himself to his people. Perhaps so. Will you go and join them? There's something I need to do first. Mervyn gave her life so that her child might live. She deserves better than to be left to drift alone. She deserves to be laid to rest beside her husband, at least. Will you help me? Look! Someone's coming! People of Razathan, it warms my heart to see so many brave, resilient souls before me. Today, I would share with you a great revelation. But before I do, I must make a humble request. Do not be alarmed, nor avert your eyes. See the one I unveil for who he is, and know that he means you no harm. Very well. I dare say it can't be worse than the horrors we've already seen. Many thanks. A dragon! People of Radzathan, I am Vritra, and for years uncounted hath this isle served as mine abode. Tis as the Satrap's ally I am known. Today, I would reveal the truth unto you. Let us hope they accept him. If I am hearing this right, you were the satrap all along? Vashan! I mean... Master Vitra... That... That... Does you to find I... Really see all? Nay, child. While my eye hath borne witness to the whole of our nation's history, to its future I am blind as thee. Countrymen... 
calamity the likes of which we have never known is come to Favnir, our home. Friends and loved ones have been taken from us. I, too, have lost my closest confidant. Ahawan loved this land and served it with dignity till his dying breath. A nobler satrap there will never be. For so long, I lacked the courage to face you. I will not easily earn your trust, this I know. And yet, I cannot sit idly by and abandon rats that harm to her fate. A font of boundless vibrancy, this jewel of the ocean. Since time immemorial, has she glittered with every color imaginable. To this dragon, slumbering in his dark lair, t'was a mesmerizing sight, and one that brought no end of joy to my heart. This calamity has stolen too much from you already. Yet so long as you live, the light of Radzadhan will never be extinguished. I pray you let me watch over it. Over you. And lend me your strength that we might face this trial and those to come as one. I do not know you, Dragon, but I thank you for speaking the truth to us. As divinities, both Manusha and Riga once joined together, so too do I believe that hand in hand, we can overcome this ordeal and welcome an era of peace. A sight that would have surely brought a smile to Isale's face. Excuse me, but I must speak with the Sartrap at once. Father! You have suffered dearly of late, yet you must endeavor to look beyond these losses to the future you yet have. On behalf of the Forum of Charlian, I come with a proposal by which you the people of Radzathan might be saved. I say again, I must speak with your satrap. I beseech you, take me to him with all possible haste. I am satrap here. Speak thy proposal. All present shall hear and judge. If I have given offense, then I apologize. First, allow me to share with you what knowledge we have of the phenomenon responsible for your woes. The final days. Tis an affliction of stagnancy and rot, sown into the currents of the star. Though the first prominent manifestation was here, in Thavnir, it will invariably spread to every corner of the world. The Forum was forewarned of this apocalypse several centuries ago. Thenceforth, my predecessors sought to prepare for the end times in the only conceivable fashion, by securing a means of escape.
Escape the store? What madness is this? Tis by no means madness. With the coming of the seventh umbral calamity, the true nature of the Red Moon, Dalamud, was revealed. That it was an artificial construct of ancient Alag. But what of the Silver Moon? This celestial satellite is yet another technological marvel fashioned and maintained by ancient allies. A ship that will sail the heavens and deliver our people from destruction. And by our people, I speak not only of Charlian. We mean to save every man, woman and child it is within our power to save. Including you, our dear friends of Radzat Han. Recent events necessitate adjustments be made, and quickly, but we can and will escort you safely to the moon. Long has thy forum been allies to Thavnir. I trust thou dost not extend this offer lightly. Yet I wonder, is this truly the way? Is there a future to be built for us beyond this star? Our father deemed the last bastion of hope. It is for that very reason I come before you and your people. To answer any and all of your questions. To offer my assurances and allay your fears. Though, if you wish the best for your people, I advise you to render your decision swiftly. Show our friends to Megaduta. They are to be received as honored guests. decision is reached, your paths shall be yours to decide. Until then, heed the warning of these brave heroes. Guard your hearts against fear and despair, for it is within such fertile soil that the seeds of blasphemy find purchase. Remain calm, and attend to your daily tasks. I shall return anon. We'll do as you say, Master Vitra. We believe in you. You're still here. What a relief. Nidana, what's the matter? Has something happened at Palika Stand? Oh, no, not that I know of. I just hope to hear your thoughts on a theory of mine. All who undergo the transformation are drained of their ether, yes? What is it then that gives these beasts the strength to carry on as they do? Logically, they must be drawing upon an alternate form of vital energy. That put me in mind of our earlier conversation, when I tried to explain the essence which many confuse with ether. Akasha, yes, I remember. The unseen gift bestowed from on high. An energy influenced solely by emotion. Yes, yes. In this instance, negative ones set Akasha into motion, thereby infusing the beasts with vitality. I posit this as the mechanism by which the beasts are born and sustained. Ah, do you 
still have that flower? If we accept that it once shone bright by drawing upon Akasha, influenced by the thoughts of those nearby, then fear, terror, despair, negative emotions so powerful as to suffocate it, permeated the air in this place. You must be very careful. The forces which drive the final days may be beyond our ability to perceive. Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you like that. At any rate, I will continue my research into Akasha. Do temper your expectations, however. There are sadly few detailed studies upon which I may draw. Formulating a new theory as you have is itself no small feat. I wish you well in your endeavors, and pray you take care. Thank you. You stay safe as well, yes? Till next we meet, and we will meet again. So blasphemies now plague all the realm. It will only get worse if what Father said is true, as it did in Amarot. If that's our model, then shouldn't we expect the effects to grow more severe as it feeds off its own spread? As if people transforming into those monstrosities wasn't bad enough. If the flora and fauna, if the land itself turned against us. No one would survive. Here's your order, friend. May you find comfort in these dark times. Where do we go from here? If there's one thing we've learned, Fighting blindly and simply reacting to what comes will accomplish nothing. We must find a solution that addresses the fundamental cause. Before our strength is exhausted, before this crisis spirals out of control. Is there something, anything we've overlooked? If there is an answer, Hydaelyn herself will have it. Twas she who bound Zodiac and forestalled the final days. Alas, we have heard naught from her since the Tower of Babel. Whether she cannot or will not speak, I can only speculate. Even the flower she gave us is no more. So advised the Watcher. What could be the significance of that name? It is entirely unfamiliar to me. To me as well. It meant something to the ancients, though. In our time. Most surely. Yet I do not recall a single mention of it in the records of Anida. Another dead end. And quite literally. It's not as if there are any ancients living we could go and ask. Not alive as such, but not quite dead.
Lydibus. I sealed him in the white horosite of the Crystal Tower back on the first. Contained within that reservoir of ether that maintains it, ether that is returned little by little to the sea, naught may remain of his soul. However, if part of it lingers, we might be able to speak with him there. I know we can no longer make that journey, but you, my friend, still can. Thank you, my friend. That would mean much to me. If nothing else, should we learn the first is safe, we'll have that much more reason to keep fighting the good fight. That said, the odds are not in our favor, to say the least. Which is why we're fortunate to have Uriange up there on the moon, working hard to make all the necessary preparations for our departure, should it come to it. And why we have nothing to lose by staying the course till the last instant. Indeed. To the last, let us all do what we can. I will consult with Master Matoya and see if she knows of a way to reach Hydaelyn from the Ethereal Sea. And I will visit the nation's leaders and attempt to ascertain how far the final days have progressed elsewhere. Keep me abreast of your findings. I can seek out and slay the worst of the immediate threats, if only to slow the spread. Unease. Terror, despair. Try as we might to suppress them, these emotions will return to harry us time and time again. But when they do, remember this. Your friends and loved ones are out there somewhere, sharing in your struggle. You are not alone. So ends the brief respite before the next revelation. Yes, so much left for you to see. Where beginning ends and end begins. Authentication complete. Please state your business. Acknowledged. Reinitializing Sitka's tower systems. Searching for Elidibus entity. located in subterranean core power accumulator projecting image my home my friends no more than a dream oh. You. Why have you awakened me? I no longer sense those places beyond. Or Lord Zodiac. 
You must explain all. So, he is fallen, and my brethren's souls returned to the star. The doom we sacrificed so much to prevent is come again. Old burdens now yours to bear. But if this is Van Daniel's design, then I, as Elidibus, have a duty to fulfill. Your unsolicited act has restored to me some few memories of the Convocation. Such knowledge as I have, I will share. I do this not for you. I merely perform my duty, as I have ever done. Where to begin? Ah, the end. Your understanding of what caused the final days is consistent with our own. The decay first took root where the currents were weakest. Yes, a conclusion drawn by him, Van Daniel. Not the him of here and now. But as I knew him, long, long ago. Having shed light upon the phenomenon, he dedicated himself to devising a countermeasure. Were it not for his knowledge of the Celestial, we would never have made the connection, and thence forestalled the final days. And though he inherited that noble soul, how different this last incarnation, so consumed by self-loathing and hate. Elpis. Yes, the name is familiar to me. Yet I know it not as a flower, but a place. A testing facility for determining which of our creations were fit to be released into the world. Many worked there, and before joining the Convocation and assuming the title of Fan Daniel, he was their chief. He was Hermes. That is all I know. The crystals tell little of the lives the Fourteen led prior to their induction. Elpis itself would tell even less. Nary a ruin has survived. Wait. I saw you there. In Elpis. Did. I did. A lingering trace of impossibility. And a truth that fills my heart. My memories remain clouded, I fear. However, they have revealed to me one possible course. You must travel to Elpis, to the time when Hermes served as its chief. In glimpsing the Exarch's memories, not only did I make his summoning magic mine own, I also mastered the workings of this tower, which, having absorbed my empowered essence, now harbors an abundance of energy. A 
As such, I believe I can deliver you unto the past, unto that place and that precise moment. Given the eons that must be traversed, the gateway will not be fully formed. Your form will be less tangible still than those warriors of light I had summoned. In all likelihood, none will be able to see or hear you. Yet even should you manage to interact with others, you will be unable to affect meaningful change. For the reality you wish to save, the reality to which you must return, exists as a result of the final days. You cannot reshape the past to undo the tragedies of the present. Cannot unmake the sorrow and suffering fated to come. In full knowledge of this, will you still entrust your life to your foe and make the journey? Very well. I shall cast you unto the river of time. Let this be my final act. You must input the commands. I no longer have the authority. First, you must reconfigure the systems, that the tower's ether may be channeled for the magic. The preparations are complete. The gateway will soon open. Return at once to the ocular. All appears to be in order. The ether flows unimpeded. The magic should consume every last moat of my essence. Why are you surprised? Did I not say that this will be my final act? Lord Zodiac is no more. There is nothing for me here. The ones I love and long to see again are waiting in that promised land beyond memory and dream. Now go, warrior of light. Go, and do not look back. Well, Hydaelyn, I take my leave of you. Yours is the mantle of the last of us. May you have the joy of it, the burden and the solitude. It falls to you now. You and your champion to save our star.
And here we are, Elpis. Well, well. How rare to receive you in person. To what do we owe the honor? Oh, just a few odd tasks. We'll be here a while. You're welcome to stay as long as you see fit, of course. As a matter of procedure, however, I must ask that you kindly remove your masks. Come now. Is this truly necessary? Surely you can tell who we are. Who you are, perhaps. But I am far less infamous. Regardless, if we do not follow protocol, it is our hosts who would be held accountable. So, please, do favor us with your handsome face. Satisfied? I thank you for your cooperation. You are free to go about your business. By the by, you see it too, yes? I haven't the foggiest what you're talking about. Hmm. That's odd. It's right here. A bit thin in the ether, but there's no mistaking it. The color of its soul is almost identical to Azem's. Do you suppose he created it? Rather unusual for a familiar to have a soul, though. Don't ask me. All I know is that it's trouble. Doubly so if it's his spitting image. So let's leave it be. Come now. Hmm. It's trying to say something. But it's literally too intangible to form words. Why don't you give it some ether? Spare a snifter of your bounteous reserves. Who do you take me for? Why, a dear friend, of course. One who wouldn't let acts of kindness, such as my accompanying him on errands to far-flung outposts, go unrewarded? I suggest you close your eyes, or this may be unpleasant. You may open your eyes. even adjusted its size. The better to indulge your whim. This way, it will be easier to communicate. How very thoughtful of you. And may I applaud your artful reinforcement. 
Without further ado then. Greetings. I am Hithlidaeus, chief of the Bureau of the Architect. Sulking beside me is the most honorable Emmet Selk of the Convocation of Fourteen. And how might we address you, my new friend? A fine name. And I'm pleased to see you understand our words. So, tell us, whence have you come? The thinness of your essence suggests you weren't created here. You do not know? Or cannot say? Hmm. Allow me to ask a different question, then. What brings you here? Well now, the same as us. Perhaps Azim wished to come too, but had to settle for a familiar. If he truly wished to be here, then he would be. Right you are. My apologies if we've given offense. The two of us can discern the color of souls, you see. And yours happens to resemble that of a friend. And with your purpose matching our own besides, we jumped to a hasty conclusion. We are here to speak with Hermes, the chief overseer of this facility, which we also intend to tour in order to gain greater insight into the man's work. We, I say, though this is Emmett Selk's charge. I am here only to serve as his guide. And I should be happy to serve as yours as well, by way of an apology for the misunderstanding. Wait. Are you suggesting that we bring it along on official business? This thing we know next to nothing about? If you harbor suspicions, better to keep it close than leave it to its own devices. Wouldn't you agree? Besides, having a mysterious life form in tow is the norm rather than the exception here. Welcome, my friends, to the testing ground of creation at Heaven's Edge, Elpis. This presence... What secrets are you hiding, I wonder? <laughs> <laughs> 